something which comes up quite often when working with artists is the whole thing of public speaking. This can be at private views, in a gallery, at your open studios, um, online, such as an Instagram Live. It could be giving a talk, being on a panel, running a workshop, or just talking about your work. Now, some of you may be absolutely fine with this and have no problem in presenting in these ways at all. Whereas others, it can be out of your comfort zone and you can get quite nervous. It's occasions like this when we can hear our inner critic very loudly in our heads. Even worse, we could have a whole chorus of imaginary people chipping in with ideas, some of which can be encouraging and others not so lovely. For example, when I do a speaking event, I bring a whole entourage with me. One voice is very strongly in my stomach like butterflies and it's very conspiratorial. It's if I make you feel ill enough you can go home and you won't have to do this. Another voice is on my shoulder and it's a real cheerleader. Don't worry you're going to be marvellous, you've prepared, you've rehearsed, you know your stuff, they're in for an absolute treat. However it's bad twin is on the other shoulder. And it sounds very much like a voice that I remember from my youth, which says, oh, goodness me, you're so conceited. Just get over yourself. Rein it in a bit and stop showing off. Behind me, there's another voice which almost has its hands on my back, pushing me, saying, oh, for goodness sake, just go out there and get on with it. There's a voice here in my in my heart kind of thing, pleading, oh, please let them like me. And then there's a professional voice, which is usually out kind of in the audience. And it's sitting there and looking at me and saying, for goodness sake, don't let me down. Well, if you're anything like me, it's hardly surprising that when we walk out, we can feel a bag of nerves because we're getting all these conflicting images with very little room in our heads for anything else. Now, there are other exercises which I've recommended for calming down nerves, such as the one minute meditation, which I find brilliant for getting a little bit of focus and perspective. But this exercise is one that can help you to identify all these voices and maybe change them so that they're more supportive. It's adapted from corporate life where it's known as the inner boardroom. But I also know a musician who uses it and calls it the inner concert hall. For the purposes of this experience, let's call it the inner art gallery. Now, this is an exercise you can do at any time so that you can hopefully preempt some of the more mischievous voices that come popping up. And you can prepare yourself in advance or you can do it closer to the event as a way of calming the nerves. So I'll go through and describe it and then you can take it away and do it at your own speed. So imagine that you're in this gallery and you're about to deliver a presentation about your work. And all these people will be turning around and looking at you and there'll be more coming in from the rest of the gallery. Think about how that feels. All the thoughts and the feelings that come rushing up. And can you identify any of those voices, those inner critics talking to you, perhaps like the ones I've mentioned that I have? Who can you hear? Where are they? Are they inside your body, around your body, in the space in front of you? And what are they saying? Be very specific. And can you hear their characters? And are they helpful? Now, some of them might be really helpful, whilst others are just troublemakers. Or to be fair, they are trying in a very heavy-handed way to protect you. 
Now, identify as many as you can and get a clear picture of who and where they are and what they're saying. We always have these voices chattering away. However, we also have the choice to make them more friendly and approachable and helpful to us. And we can do this by creating a sort of intervention. So when you've got as many of these uh, characters, if you like, that you can think of out, think about replacing the negative ones with more positive voices. So who would you prefer to have talking to you just before you start a presentation? Who are these new positive voices replacing? And where are they? Again, are they in your body? Are they in front of you? Are they beside you? And what are they saying? So you can build up a whole new group of cheerleaders for you, for yourself. One of my clients has placed Sir David Attenborough next to her to give her a final verbal push when she's about to step out to present. I mean, let's face it, we could all do with David Attenborough in our lives. Another one has her late mother. So it can be someone you personally know or a larger role model. Gradually, as you become more accustomed to talking, you can place more of these positive voices around you so that you are surrounded by those which are encouraging, supporting, supportive and helpful. Now, as with any of the exercises I set, have a play with this and see if it's something that can help you create the voices you want to hear, which are on your side. 